using rattle baits to catch greenbacks. This is just a little eater guy, we'll let him go. Can we just start over? outside so we are cozied up in a snow bear on Lake Winnipeg in Manitoba we uh, we hit up icebound excursions we rented a do-it-yourself snow bear you really just have to show up with your own rods uh, you've got everything ready to rip and we're bahan around chasing big greenback walleyes on rattle baits does it get any more fun than that bigger uh, giant so a lot of the times when I'm working rattle baits on Winnipeg, it's a little bit deeper water and I'm ripping them, say three to four feet off bottom looking for that bigger bite. Right now, we slid up way shallower. We got 8.2 feet of water under the ice right here, and these fish have been coming through only about a foot off bottom. Uh, just skinnier water, not a lot of room to play with. So what I'm doing is I'm working these baits one foot off bottom. I'm doing one foot rips. Instead of those big three, four foot rips, I do out deeper. Just a little one, maybe a two foot hop and then I'm rolling that bait in place about a foot to a foot and a half off bottom where I'm just rocking and rolling that rod tip and not giving it any slack. And I'm, what that does is that lets that bait kick like this down there and basically sit in place and move and breathe down there. And it's really good for sealing the deal. A lot of the times when you're fishing this skinny of water, those fish, if they're hot, they will come through so fast and hit the bait, you'll never graph them. I'm hoping that a few of them come in a little bit slower, work the bait so we can show you different jigging cadences and basically how we change how we're working that bait based on how the fish is reacting to what we're offering them. <laughs> now that one, I never graphed. It just came flying in and smoked the bait. So not a lot to show you with that fish. But I'll take it like that any day of the week. That's how you know that you've got the right bait dialed in, right? Not a huge fish, but a gorgeous one, green back. Let's see if we can get a bigger one. That fish came in and smoked it when I was doing that rocking and rolling motion, having that bait just sit down there and have that back end kick up. Never saw him, just smoked it. You know, one to two foot rip, maybe three of them in a row, and then I'm gonna stop and rock that bait in place. I don't know, maybe for five seconds. Same thing, give her a little rip. One, two, three, rock and roll that bait in place. And a lot of the times, those fish that you don't graph, They'll do a couple series of rips, basically to call them in, like you hear people say. And once you're rocking that thing, they just smoke it. And especially in the shallow water, it's hard to get them to, to graph a lot of the times when they come in fast, because that cone angle is so narrow in shallow water. So I got my transducer hung below the bottom edge of the ice, just to let me see a little bit more. You can see that my gain is turned way up. I am in low power mode, which I use most of the time when I'm in less than 20 feet of water. Uh, but I have my gain all the way up to three or four just to make sure that I can read that bait when it kicks out to the side a little bit and maybe pick up a fish when he's three, four feet away. All that being said, one thing I've noticed with the uh, Lake Winnipeg Greenbacks, and it's it holds true for some other lakes too, but it's almost like lake trout fishing where even if they're consistently coming through about a foot off bottom, occasionally reel up four feet, five feet off bottom, and give that bait a couple of big rips, rocking in place. And uh, sometimes those bigger fish will come through suspended off bottom, whatever they're chasing, tulabies or whatnot, junk floating under the ice. I've heard rumors of fish eating that. Uh, it's just a good, a good practice because it doesn't happen all the time, but it could just be one big fish on that trip where you reel up five feet off bottom, rock that bait for a couple seconds, and boom, smoke a giant that comes out of nowhere. So this fish has been looking at my bait for a while, 
and it comes up but it never commits. So one of my favorite things to do, open the bale, let that bait crash to bottom, pound the bait two, three times, then raise it up, wiggle it in place, and a lot of the times those fish will shoot up and we'll see if this one wants to play. Here he comes. A lot of those times those fish will shoot up and then they will actually eat. They just can't stand that bait going down past their face and then shooting up past them. And it doesn't matter if you're fishing with rattle baits, jigging spoons, what have you. If that fish is not committing and he's just eyeing you up, open that bait, let it hit bottom, pound, 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 and then quick like reel up so that bait shoots right by him, wiggle it in place, lights out, man. We're going Baja and we're heading out, we're crossing this main crack once we find a safe place. And we're gonna try for a big deep water giant. I don't think we're gonna catch as many fish as in these shallow nine to 11 foot stuff, but we're Baja to that 15, 16, 17 foot. And if we catch one and it's a freaking mule, mission accomplished. Look at me, I am the captain now. I can't show all the secrets, but here's a few of my go-tos that, I mean, over the last eight years of coming up here, they're just tried and true and always put fish topside. My number one favorite is a live target golden shiner. And there's something special about the rattles and the way that the tail of that bait kicks. It's similar to the jackal in that you can rock it in place. And it's really good for calling fish in, obviously, because the rattles, but when they come in close to seal the deal and you back way off and you just rock that bait, so you're rolling the tip of your rod, not putting any slack in the line, the back of that bait kicks almost in place and you get just a little subtle rattle and that's when they're gonna thump it. It's not usually on the big rip, so call them in and then seal the deal. Another one of my go-to's when fish are a little more aggressive is when I like the Rapala Rip and Wraps. A number six or even a number seven, which is massive and looks outrageous when you're fishing on the ice for walleyes. But that's got a little different action. It's not as much of a rock in place as it is more of a two, three inch hops. And I almost hop it in place. So big rips to call those fish in. And with the Rip and Wrap, slow it down and hop that bait for them to seal the deal. Now when it comes to the big rip and wraps, the jackals, the the Yozuris, the live target golden shiners, whatever your go-to rattle bait is, your confidence booster. For me, whites, pinks, purples are just always money out here. I really like mono. I feel like I lose less fish and then I stiffen up my leader. So I use about a 10 pound main line typically. For my leader, I don't want anything smaller than 12. And there's a couple reasons for that. That stiffer fluorocarbon leader is gonna make that bait foul less. And also it gives you a little bit of an anchor point for getting those fish turned up the hole. You have a little bit more uh, beef for, for landing those fish at the, at the edge of the ice and you don't have to worry about that eight pound going patink. As you can see here, bright colors, flashy, gaudy. But then in my go-to, my one box that I would bring here, you also got to have some of the fluttery, buttery stuff if the fish get fussy. Uh, so many people are using rattle baits out here and obviously they work. If the bite gets tough and everywhere you look, guys are going brr, 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 and sometimes you can see those fish bugger off on the flasher. If you bust out the flutter spoons or the rattle spoons even, you're going to catch way more fish. It's just a, just a matter of reading the mood of the fish, but this morning, they're eating the rattle bait. I'm just gonna pin them. Oh. That's nice. a healthier one. Nice fish, terrible landing job. <laughs> nice Look at that bait. <laughs> Say cheese. <laughs> you custom painted crankbait and son of a gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh! Whoa, you got the bladed treble on there? You're a dirt bag. That was like your first drop with that thing. Dude, awesome. Sweet. Down she goes. 
Later, girl. Nice. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Hasta la vista. I saw it. It was like 14, 15 pounds. A little better. Nice fish, dude. Nice. 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 Swayze, what you got going on? Green bags. <laughs> uh, maybe pop on a knee. That's awesome. Dude, I got one on me. See ya. Sometimes that was four, four and a half feet off. Really? They're like he's wiggling his live target like he knows how to use it. <laughs> With rattle baits, if this thing eats. Oh. Dude, move your hand. Oh, I thought it was going to be way bigger when I first grabbed it. Open up. T bond it. Yeah, he smoked it. Pretty. Oh. Do you think he should maybe have that checked out? Yeah, there's the trails and everything, you know they're big. There's another one down there. Barbless! <laughs> Not a giant, but my goodness is that fun! Coming in and just smoking a rattle bait shallow water i got seven and a half feet of water under the ice here dude insane numbers and then when you can get the bonus bite like that that's what i'm talking about give me some man how are you not excited i'm trying to get the double there's one dollar shoot him jacob oh pooched him <laughs> so the first thing everybody thinks of when they hear lake winnipeg is big giant greenbacks and of course you've got a really good shot at the fish of a lifetime but what you might not know is numbers wise yesterday we came out here and we had a hundred fish day for three guys legit where else can you go out and catch a hundred walleyes to just pile drive that many walleyes in one day one after another slinging them in and then get the bonus big ones mixed in dude that numbers game and the action and just getting those hook sets in insane fishery i'm gonna be coming up here for years to come we're just wrapping things up right now we're still catching some fish but as you can tell outside we got a little bit of a blizzard action blowing in and it's fading fast so we want to make sure we get our way back into shore safely might have to sneak out in the morning and sneak a couple more hook sets in but if we don't do this has been a wild ride my hands are freaking bleeding and cut up i'm gonna need to super glue them together from all those hook sets and good times with buddies i cannot wait to get back up to lake winnipeg and manitoba so you want to see a really good reason to rent a snow bear it might have seemed warm and cozy today while we were fishing and it was in here this is what i was not to try to set up a hub house and yikes that wind's blowing like 200 miles across this damn lake yeah thanks man actually might book another day tomorrow because i am not trying to go out there in my truck let me in 